So, a Dragonborn appears at this moment in the turning of the age. First, let us see if you truly are Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. Fools! Do not be afraid. Your shout, Dragonborn, it is you. Welcome to High Hrothgar. I am Master Angir. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn, why have you come here? We are the Greybeards, followers of the Way of the Voice. You stand in High Hrothgar, on the slopes of Kinarith's sacred mountain. Here we commune with the Voice of the Sky and strive to achieve balance between our inner and outer selves. Well, we are here to guide you in that pursuit, just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the dragon blood that came before you. You are not the first. There have been many of the dragon blood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you are the only Dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. You have shown that you are Dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. But do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? That remains to be seen. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a thum, a shout. Now let us see if you are willing. And yes, my friend. I will wait and watch. Speak in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Ro, the second word in unrelenting force. Ro means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Ro. do have the gift. But learning a word of power is only the first step. You must unlock its meaning through constant practice in order to use it in a shout. Well, that is how the rest of us learn shouts. As Dragonborn, you can absorb a slain dragon's life force and knowledge directly. As part of your initiation, Master Einarth will allow you to tap into his understanding of Rome. your unrelenting force shout to strike the targets as they appear. Peace. Ah! Force? Bro! Well done. Again. Peace. Ah! Force? You learn quickly. Once more. Pixosa! Fus! Impressive. 
Your thumb is precise. You show great promise, Dragonborn. We will perform your next trial in the courtyard. Follow Master Bori. Inigo, wait there. Inigo, do this. Inigo, kill that. Inigo, wait some more. Sometimes I wish I was not so agreeable. see how you learn a completely new shunt. Master Bori will teach you wood, which means whirlwind. Wood. You must hear the word within yourself before you can project it into a thumb. Approach Master Bori and he will gift you his knowledge of wood. Yep. You will see how quickly you can master a new shunt. Master Wolfgar will demonstrate whirlwind sprint. Then it will be your turn. Master Bori? Vex! Wolf! Now, your turn. Stand next to me. Master Bori will open the gate. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. Vex! Wolf! Your quick mastery of a new thumb is uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself? You were given this gift by the gods for a reason. It is up to you to determine how best to use it. You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jürgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ustengraf. Remain true to the way of the voice, and you will return. No doubt, the appearance of a dragonborn at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. You should focus on honing your voice and soon your path will be made clear. There is indeed much that we know that you do not. That does not mean that you are ready to understand it. Do not let your easy mastery of the voice tempt you into the arrogance of power. That has been the downfall of many Dragonborn before you. Dragons have the inborn ability to learn and project their voice. Dragons also are able to absorb the power of their slain brethren. A few mortals are born with similar abilities, whether a gift or a curse has been a matter of debate down through the centuries. What you have already learned in a few days took even the most gifted of us years to achieve. Some believe that dragonborn are sent into the world by the gods at times of great need. We will speak more of that later when you are ready. Dragons have always been able to shout. Language is intrinsic to their very being. There is no difference in the dragon tongue between debating and fighting. Shouting comes as naturally to a dragon as breathing or speaking. In mythic times, when mortal kind was in great need, the goddess Kinnereth granted us the ability to speak as dragons do. 
For most people, long years of training are required to learn even the simplest shout. But for you, the dragon speech is in your blood, and you learn it almost without effort. Five. Our leader, Parthenax, lives alone on the peak of the throat of the world. When your voice can open the path, you will know you are ready to speak to him. As I said, you will know you are ready when your voice can open the path to him. We study the way of the voice according to the teachings of our founder, Jürgen Windkoller. Very few are permitted to study with us here at High Hrothgar. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege to guide you towards mastery of your voice. Their voices are too powerful for anyone not trained in the way to withstand. Even a whisper could kill you. The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnereth at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation of the sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. The Dragonborn is an exception to all the rules. The Dragon Blood itself is a gift of the gods. If we accept one gift, how can we deny the other? As Dragonborn, you have received the ability to shout directly from Akatosh. We therefore seek to guide you on the proper use of your gift which transcends the restrictions which bind other mortals. He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, a master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was born. Wind, guide you. Greybeards have taught you well, and you are a quick learner. Now you are louder and faster than ever. Let us go get that horn, my friend. You lead, I follow.
There is no need to push. You there. You're the one they call Dragonborn. Your lies fall on deaf ears, Deceiver. We know you are the false Dragonborn. You shall not stand in the way of the true Dragonborn's return. He comes soon, and we shall offer him your heart. When Lord Mirak appears, all shall bear witness. None shall stand to oppose him. Time. <laughs> You won't do it. Could it the return of the Dragonborn? And who among us could possibly hold that honor and such power? Ah, good to see you again. How'd that delivery go? Quite a climb, wasn't it? Anyway, much appreciated. Here, take this for your troubles. Thanks again for the legwork.
the gods, it's true, isn't it? A dragon has attacked Whiterun. How could mere men bring down such a beast? Ah, bows and arrows for the mighty huntsman. much for your business. Divine smile on you, friend. Mama, you're back! Did you get me a present? You got me a present? Really? Oh, stop teasing me! Let me know if you see anything you like. What do you need? So you're interested in my potions and ingredients? Come back any time if you need a remedy. I offer remedies for ailments both common and rare. Do let me know if I can be of service.
Why don't you make a poison that causes a farmer's ears to follow? That would be amazing. And amusing. If there's anything I can help you with, you have but to ask. I bet you could get a good price for those gems. How do you feel? I think you might be sick. Take a look. Until next. I sell cures for all angels, and I'll be happy to serve you. You'll find tonics. Poultices and potions on my shelves. Browse to your heart's content. You look so you're interested in my potions and ingredients? Come back anytime if you need a remedy. My favorite drink. Let's get some. Please meat. tell me you have news of my son. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. You take care of yourself now. The finest. Take a look. Good hunting. Terrible and powerful Talos. We, your unworthy servants, give praise for holding to your
even Blackbriar at her back. One snap of her fingers and you could end up in Riften jail. Or worse. They represent the reason I'm here. I can't just ignore them, Eren. I know. I just don't want you Oh, thank you. You're the only Divines bless your kind world. heart. All right, then. Can I interest you in some fine goods from Morrowind? I may be Dark Elf by birth, but I was raised Argonian. For reasons I'm still trying to discover, I ended up orphaned, then taken in by a kindly Argonian family in Black Marsh. I hope one day to find out what happened to me, how Protect I ended up like right. that. Buy armor from Grelka. Just one. I know when I was found by my Argonian father, I was wrapped in a blanket bearing the symbol of House Telvanni. It was one of the great houses in Morrowind long ago. Whether that means I was one of them or not, I'm uncertain. If you come across anything in your travels that might provide me with the answers I'm looking for, I'd be grateful. Thank you. I learned that a matron who had served for House Telvanni had escaped Morrowind during the Accession War. Records showed her buying passage aboard a sailing vessel named the Pride of Telvos, but that's where the trail ran cold. I spent years looking for what became of the ship, but I ended up empty-handed. Just what you see here. Anything Never done an honest day's work in your life for all that block. coin you carry, Alas. I'm saying you've got the coin, but you didn't earn a septum of it honestly. I can tell. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, lass. Wealth is my business. Buy some armor Maybe you'd like a taste. It. I've got a bit of an errand to perform, but I need an extra pair of hands. And in my line of work, extra hands are well paid. Simple. I'm going to cause a distraction. You're going to steal Medesi's silver ring from a strong box under a stand. Once you have it, I want you to place it in Branche's pocket without him noticing. There's someone that wants to see him put out of business permanently. That's all you need to know. Now, you tell me when you're ready. And we'll get started. Clean and free from Rothgoyne. Good. Looking Wait until alive. I start the distraction. Then show me what you're made of. Everyone, everyone, gather round. I have something amazing to show you that demands your attention. Gather round, all. This way, Come everyone. On, Over here. What is it this time? Patience, bro. Okay. This is a rare opportunity, and I wouldn't want you to get left out. That's what you said about the wisp essence, and it turned out to be crushed nerve root mixed with water. Well, that was a simple mis. See that my time is up. Come back tomorrow if you wish to buy. You should probably what be in bed. You're time. looking a bit under the weather. Damn! I knew I shouldn't have waited. Vegetables as crisp as a winter's morning. Looks like I chose the right person for the job. Looks like I chose the right person for the job. 
And here you go. Your payment. Just as I promised. The way things have been going around here. It's a relief that our plan went off without a hitch. Nah. My organization's been having a run of bad luck. But I suppose that's just how it goes. But never mind that. You did the job, and you did it well. Best of all, there's more where that came from. If you think you can handle it. All right, then. Let's put that to the Thanks test. The, of apples, the group I represent has its home in the Ratway so beneath Riften, a tavern Top called chair. the Ragged Flagon. Get there in one piece, and, and we'll see if you've really got what it takes. Well, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, you'll have me as a customer for life. Protect yourself right. Buy armor from Grelka. You gonna buy something, or just here for training? Otherwise, move on. Look. I've moved all over Skyrim selling these bits of junk, right, and I'm barely friends, scraping yeah. by. I'm not out to win friends, and I could care less if you're happy about your purchase or not. I just need the coin. The sooner I get out of Skyrim, the better. Are you serious? The war is tearing the land apart. The dragons have returned seeking who knows what. Skyrim is going nowhere, fast. If I were you, I'd pack up and get out of here before you end up in one of those burial cairns. You can walk up with me to the keep, or I can drag your lifeless body. Come back when you're ready to spend more gold. Goodness knows I could Very well. Fresh meats and produce. Jewelry with legendary Argonian craftsmanship. You're gonna st Come on, come on. Take a look. I'll teach you how to use it effectively, and keep you quick on your feet. Come back when you're ready to spend more Goodness knows I could use it. Greet. If anything pleases the eye, don't hesitate to make me an offer. I do. Sadly, I'm one of the few traditional Saxlil jewelers that remains in Tamriel. It's becoming a lost art. Only trouble is gathering materials has become hazardous. The roads to the mines and to the other cities are thick with bandits, and worse. Would you be interested in gathering some materials for me? I'd certainly be happy to compensate you. Thank you, Landstrider. I'm seeking a small list of items to complete my next creation. Two flawless sapphires, a mammoth tusk, and a chunk of gold ore. Not well, I'm afraid. That Brynjolf, he keeps draining the people's pockets with his ridiculous miracle cures. A few months ago, it was Troll Fatsav, and now he's got something new. Not that there's anything that can be done about it. He's in good with the Thieves' Guild. Everything I've got on display, really. Safe travels, Landstrider. Protect yourself right. Buy armor from Come to see Balaman perform miracles with steel, eh? Smithing's been in my blood for generations. I owe my success to my forefathers and their recipe for flame. The secret is my forge. It consumes fire salts, a strange mineral that burns as hot as red mountain lava. Well, it was. Sadly, this forge is dying, and I've used the last of my fire salts. If I can't feed it soon, it may grow cold. You will? Thank you. Ten pinches of fire salt should give me all I need to bring this forge back to life. People say I'm making gold off of other people's misery, but what else would I do? Smithing is all I know.
Next time one of my shields deflects a killing blow, they'll change their tune. A flame Atronach's body might provide fire salt. They're dangerous creatures that can be summoned by wizards. Of course, it would be much easier to check with an alchemist. They occasionally have them for sale. You wish to do what I do? Very well. Looking to protect yourself or deal some damage? Remember, nothing but genuine fire salts will do. The forge knows the difference. Bubbles and gleaming gemstones over here. Vegetables as crisp as a winter's morning. Come to see Balaman perform miracles with steel, eh? What brings you? Take a look. Remember, nothing but genuine fire will do. The forge knows the difference. Buy some armor and live to tell about it. All meats guaranteed, clean and free from rock joint. Let me know if you see anything you like. Are you feeling all right, dear? You look a little ill. I swear if I wasn't around, Elgrim would forget to eat his meals. How we make any coin at all is beyond me. In fact, I need to arrange for someone to pick up an ore sample for me in Shore's stone. Now, goodness knows Elgrim won't lift a finger to do it. You would? Oh, that would be wonderful. Speak to Filnyar in Shore's stone. He's got some sort of ore sample he wants us to identify, and was willing to pay us well for it. When Elgrim said we were setting up shop down here, I told him he would catch his death. The dirt, the moisture, is disgusting. Who wants to spend their life living like a skeever? But that old bellyacre just fed me some nonsense about light ruining his mixtures and being close to the water. Ugh. I know how to mix a few basic potions, but I'm nowhere near as skilled as a master alchemist. 
I've picked up a few tricks by reading the tomes scattered all over the shop, but I don't have the knack to pull off half of the formulas. I wish Elgrim had spent more time tutoring me than that Ingen girl. Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. Elgrim can barely put on his own shoes, let alone have the energy to pursue a young girl. He's been gushing about how talented Ingen is at alchemy. He'd never say it to her face. That's not his way. I just think Elgrim's taken it upon himself to mentor the young thing, so he focuses a lot of attention on her. Take a look. Be careful. The road to Shore's stone could be dangerous. My mind is on my experiments today. What did you need? I'm aspiring to earn that title, yes. However, the road ahead is paved with loose cobbles and deadly pitfalls. Master Elgrim says I'm a natural, that I have a unique talent. But I fear his approval masks his intolerance for my mistakes. My errant formulas have cost Master Elgrim a fortune in ingredients, some of which are almost irreplaceable. To restore Master Elgrim's supply, I would need 20 Death Bell, 20 Nightshade, and 20 Nernroot. Am I sensing that you may be interested in gathering these rare ingredients for me? That means more time for my experiments and less time in the field. Much appreciated. It's exhilarating to observe the effects of my potions on the body. Watching the heart stop, the eyes go blind. We're made up of thousands of parts with thousands of different functions all working in tandem to keep us alive. Yet if only a single part of our imperfect machine fails, life fails. It makes one realize how fragile, how flawed we are. You ask why I'm so fascinated? The irony, the irony that the same world that gave us life provides us the means to die. Nernroot is the easiest. It grows only by the water and makes a unique chiming noise. The only drawback is it won't regrow after harvesting. Nightshade is native to the pine forest and marshy tundra regions of Skyrim, and has a distinctive starburst-like violet flower. Last, we have Deathbell, which only grows in marshy tundra terrain. Its inverted bluish-purple flower bunches are unmistakable. <laughs> My family. All that wealth, and they squander it on foolish ventures and political schemes. I was meant for so much more than all of this. I wish to pledge my life and ply my talents in darker circles. If only my mother would let me, I would make her proud. My experiments can't be completed until you've brought me those ingredients. Do hurry. Dare you!
you have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defense? Well, maybe just this once. But there's still a price on your head. Better make yourself scarce. We'll have to do this little dance again. Little elf. You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defense? Well, maybe just this once. But there is still a price on your head. Better make yourself scarce, or we'll have to do this little dance again. Don't take this the way- huh? Don't even think about it. Have you managed out to shore stone? <laughs> 